Today I am testing the much anticipated 4 core 8 thread Ryzen 3 3300X. It's launching at the entry level price of $120 and it features AMD's 7 nanometer Zen 2 micro architecture as well as PCI Express Gen 4 support if you pair it with a 500 series AM4 motherboard. It's going head to head against Intel's former top tier quad core chip, the KB Lake based i7 7700K. Excellent. The Dark Core RGB Pro is a premium wireless gaming mouse from Corsair with a long list of features like an 18,000 DPI low power PixArt optical sensor for maximum precision with minimal power usage, attractive 9 zone dynamic RGB backlighting and a comfortable contoured shape with two interchangeable side grips included. Connect wirelessly via Corsair's sub 1 millisecond slipstream technology via Bluetooth for convenience on the go or wired via USB-C. Durable arm round switches, up to 50 hours of battery life, 8 fully programmable buttons and more so click the sponsor link in the description for details. So I'm going to cover my test setup and methodology first, but feel free to jump ahead to the benchmarks if you prefer. The 3300X has a sibling that will also be in reviews today, which is the $100 Ryzen 3 3100, which also is a 4-core 8-thread CPU, but it's not just an underclocked 3300X. It actually has a different CCD layout, as you can see here. The 3100 uses two cores per CCX unit, whereas the 3300X uses four cores from the same CCX. This just means less core-to-core -core latency in the 3300X which should give a performance bump that the 3100 can't necessarily match just by overclocking. This combined with a few setbacks personally that I've had over the past week, such as my main games SSD dying on me at the worst possible time, is why I opted to only test the 3300X today. I also wanted to test a setup that is in line with the price of this chip. I didn't want to just throw an X570 motherboard at it that's going to cost 200 plus dollars that people probably aren't going to be using with this chip. So I updated the BIOS from my $550 build from a few weeks back and used it for the 3300X's benchmarks. So yes, I'm just using the Wraith Stealth Cooler that will ship with the 3300X, and our motherboard is just a $90 Gigabyte B450 Aorus M. I also tested in the Thermaltake Versa H18 Micro ATX case right here, which does have one additional fan, so it's got one intake and one exhaust. Now for a GPU, I chose the RTX 2060 and specifically opted for the EVGA RTX 2060 KO edition because it's available for $300. I think this would be a reasonable if maybe a little bit higher end GPU to pair with a $120 CPU and you do want a little bit more GPU horsepower if you're trying to suss out the difference from one CPU to the next. Right now there's an MSI RTX 2060 in there that's just there for looks for this filming part right here, but this entire setup uh, or something akin to it would cost you around $750. That's for a pretty powerful gaming PC as you will hopefully see in a few moments. I'm also rocking 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Flare X memory, which is DDR4 3200 speed, cast latency 14, which is actually a little bit shy of that AMD recommends for Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. So there might be a little bit more performance to be had with this CPU if you did upgrade the memory just a little bit, but I wanted to use identical kits in both test systems. Speaking of both systems, the other rig is based on the Intel Core i7 7700K. I chose to compare to the Intel 7700K for several reasons. First, there is no desktop 4-core 8-thread CPU option in Intel's 8000 or 9000 series, and there hasn't been since Intel started doing 6-core CPUs without hyper-threading to cover their mid-range. Also, the 7700K is still based on 14 nanometer manufacturing technology, and it effectively still has the same single-core performance at the same clock speed as an 8000 series or 9000 series chip. Also, it launched back in January 2017 for $340, and I thought it would be cool to see how far we have come in about about three years since this was the last quad core flagship before Intel finally moved to six cores max on their mainstream platform with the 8000 series. Now I cannot go without mentioning that the true competition from Intel for these Ryzen 3 CPUs, if there is to be any, isn't launching for another two weeks with the 10th gen core series, which does have four core, eight thread entry level i3 CPUs. So I will probably be re revisiting these chips for that launch, which by the way is May 20th. Back to the specs though, my Intel testbed features the 7700K running at 4.5 gigahertz across all cores, which is a little bit faster frequency wise than those new i3s that are coming out like the 10100, just FYI, but I am using the Gigabyte Aorus Z270X Gaming 7 motherboard. Same GPU and memory for both rigs and both rigs are also running 250 gig SATA SSDs for Windows 10. Since the 7700K doesn't ship with the CPU cooler, I am using the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition, which looks quite nice, but I am not gonna be comparing temps 
between the two CPUs since that's on an open test bed with a aftermarket cooler, so it's not really a fair comparison by any stretch. I do want to share the CPU temps for the 3300X though, because you'll want to know whether or not the Wraith Stealth that it's gonna ship with can do a passable job. It can just barely, but I did see temps as high as 95C during longer tests, such as the Blender render sequence. It was hitting 4,342 megahertz peak frequency, so about 4.35 gigahertz, and that's across all cores, but uh, when sustained until the temps reached 90C or above, the frequency would drop to about 4,092 megahertz, and then even further below that once it got towards 95. The Wraith Stealth will get you by with the 3300X, but it might be worth your while to upgrade the cooler at some point. With that said, let's get into the benchmarks, and here's one more look at the testing configurations. We're starting off with CPU benchmarks and of course the classic Cinebench R20. The 3300X scored 2,479 points here using all of its cores and threads. That's about 3% faster than the Intel's score of 2,408. It also bested it on the single thread test with a score of 500. That's 6.4% faster than the 7700K's score of 470. Next we have CPU mark, which includes a batch of synthetic tests. Here the 3300X wins once again, actually its largest margin of victory with a 16% win and the score of 14,963 over the 7700K score of 12,869. I should point out this is a little bit of an outlier. This is showing the best comparative performance for the 3300X, and the 3300X seemed to do a little bit better in my CPU benchmarks than in the gaming benchmarks, but more on that in just a moment. Oh, and it was also 9.1% faster on the single thread test. Next we have the classic Blender BMW render, and this is time in seconds, so faster is better here. And they were pretty much neck and neck. The 3300 X edged out the 7700K with 450.6 seconds total. That's only about 0.3% faster though, so they're pretty much equivalent. Handbrake 1.3 is next, and this is taking a fairly lengthy, almost 17 minute 4K video and transcoding it down to 1080, 30 frames per second. 3300X wins once again here with an overall time of 888.4 seconds. It was outputting the render at 33.7 FPS, and that's 1.4% faster than the 7700K. And now let's switch over to some gaming specific benchmarks. Starting out with the 3D Mark suites, we have Fire Strike as well as Time Spy. And I include these because they include CPU specific tests, which can often show a good point of comparison when comparing two CPUs. Here we see the 7700K answering back though with an overall score of 8,989. That's about 0.9% faster than the 3300X and a better graphic score as well of 9,585. And here I have to wonder if the 3300X was outfitted with a little bit faster, maybe 3600 speed memory, if it would close the gap a little bit in terms of what it could get out of a graphics card. Granted, the 7700K could also be overclocked beyond 4.5 gigahertz as well. So let's just focus on the numbers. The 7700K's graphics score of 9585 was 1.9% faster than the 3300X, but the 3300X still did win the physics test here, which is more CPU reliant with a score 14,606, 5.3% faster than the 7700K. Moving over to Time Spy, which is a DirectX 12 test, the 7700 100K had a clean sweep, winning the overall graphics and CPU scores. Overall was 3.2% faster, graphics was 1.3% faster, and the CPU score here was 10.8% faster, which makes me have to wonder the differences under the hood in the 3D Mark test suites between the physics test in Fire Strike and the CPU test in Time Spy. Now here's a few actual games. We're running these all at 1920 by 1080, starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also DirectX 12. The 3300X was not able to keep up with the 7700K here. 7700K had 117 average frames per second, which is about 5.4% faster. It was also about 10% faster when it comes to the 1% lows. GTA 5 is next, also running at 1920 by 1080. 3300 X here did have a better 1% low score, about 4.6% better, but the average frame rate was pretty much the same. The 7700K did edge out with 137 versus 136. Here's Overwatch, still at 1920 by 1080, and if you're playing a competitive FPS and you're playing on a high refresh rate monitor like a 240 hertz, you might be very interested to know what kind of frame rate you can get out of a graphics card. Now bear in mind, this is using epic settings, so you can totally get more frames out of Overwatch. It's actually very flexible when it comes to the graphics settings. That said, the 7700K wins here with an average frame rate of 206. That's 5.1% faster than the 3300X, and it's also 10.2% faster when it comes to the 1% lows. So a big part of my job that I actually enjoy a lot is helping people find cost-effective solutions for DIY PC building, whether it's for a gaming PC or otherwise. 
Budget CPUs can often get the job done, but are also often lacking in some areas. You have to give something up for that budget price. If gaming is your focus though, I am happy to say that the 3300X is an amazing CPU for the price. Trading blows with Intel's top quad core from three years ago, but for a price of $120 instead of $340. There is still the question of whether or not four cores and eight threads are going to be enough for gaming in 2020 and beyond. But fortunately, this platform also has upgrade paths available, six core, 12 thread CPUs in the 3600 and 3600X for about 200 bucks, eight cores and 16 threads with the $300 3700X, and you got 12 and 16 core CPUs too if you wanna go all out. Of course, those do cost quite a bit more. On the downside, the 3300X can get very hot. So make sure you have a case with good ventilation. Perhaps consider adding a fan or two if your case is a little bit lacking in airflow. And of course, consider an aftermarket cooler if you want to overclock a little bit more or just to sustain better temperatures and therefore better frequencies by default. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video though. I will put links to all this stuff down in the description. And let me know in the comments if you've got your eye on the 3300X or the 3100, or if you're holding out for those 10th gen Intel results or maybe for something with more cores. Of course, it would be awesome if you'd subscribe to my channel too if you haven't already. Check up my store at paulsherbware.net for shirts, mugs, pint glasses, bottle openers, and lots of other cool stuff you can buy. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out if you thought this video was good, and we'll see you in the next one.